Warren Moon is an unappreciated football legend. Holding records in both the NFL and CFL, he managed to play 23 seasons of professional football. There's lots of hype directed toward other quarterbacks of the 80s, but Warren Moon truly is the most underappreciated quarterback of all time. Still holding several all-time gridiron football passing records and being the only player in both the CFL and NFL Hall of Fame, it's important to discuss his career and impact on the game. Today on Football Lore, we'll be going over the incredible career and life of Warren Moon. The Game of Football's Best Kept Secret Warren Moon was born in Los Angeles, California in November of 1956. He was the middle child of a large family consisting of six sisters. His childhood was not free of hardship, and his father sadly passed away of liver disease when Warren was seven. This forced his mother into a situation where she had to find a way to care for her seven children. As a nurse, she was consistently working overtime to be able to provide for her family, and due to this, Moon became self-sufficient at an early age. Warren developed the skills of cooking, sewing, ironing, and housekeeping to help his family. Amidst this hardship, it was clear that Warren had a natural athletic ability. He loved several sports early in his athletic career, but was forced to choose one. His work schedule didn't allow him to be a multi-sport athlete, so he decided to focus on the sport he excelled at the most, football. He made this decision based on the fact that he could throw the ball further and straighter than anyone he knew. Little did he know he would be setting himself up for an incredible multi-decade career. While today most NFL players have been the star player on their team since the Pop Warner Youth League days, Warren Moon broke the mold. He was enrolled at a high school that was more focused on academics than athletics, and even then was the backup quarterback for most of his high school career. In his junior year, he finally made the varsity team and was able to get on the field. Once he had the chance to start, it was clear there'd be no going back. He had a large jump in performance going into his senior year, taking his team to the playoffs and being named to the All-City team in Los Angeles. There was not a lot of demand for the quarterback due to his limited playtime at the high school level. Warren decided to attend the two-year West Los Angeles College due to the lack of interest, and had an incredible freshman year. He broke almost all major passing records for the college in his freshman year. But even then, there was not a large demand for the quarterback from major four-year programs. There was one school, however, that was willing to take a chance on Warren Moon to have a chance to harness his absolute cannon of an arm. That school was the University of Washington. Washington didn't have incredibly high expectations for Moon initially, but he managed to win the starting job his first year there. The first two seasons under Warren's leadership were okay. The Huskies went 11-11, missing bowl games both years. His senior year, though, would be his standout in terms of play. Warren Moon took the Huskies to the Rose Bowl and managed to upset Michigan, who were huge favorites going into the game. In this game, Warren Moon managed to secure MVP by rushing for two touchdowns and passing for another. This, on top of a Pac-8 title for Washington, cemented him as one of the best college quarterbacks in the country. And he declared for the NFL Draft, hoping this success would lead him to the league. Since Moon had only had one real standout year in college, there wasn't much of a chance of him being taken early in the draft. There's also the unfortunate reality that, at the time, racial prejudice still existed in leadership of most major sports leagues. Despite a standout year, scouts thought that Moon couldn't possess the traits needed to be a proper quarterback, which is insane considering the career he went on to have. Moon was aware that there was a good chance that he wouldn't have been chosen and if he was chosen as a late-round pick, would never get a real chance to play. This made him apprehensive of the NFL, so he decided to go to the CFL in the Great White North instead to ball out, and ball out he did. In 1978, six weeks prior to the NFL draft, Warren Moon made the pivotal decision to sign with the Edmonton Eskimos of the Canadian Football League, or the CFL. This move marked the beginning of a significant chapter in his football career, Initially, the Eskimos employed a huge dual quarterback system, featuring both Moon and the seasoned Tom Wilkinson. While unconventional, this strategy proved to be remarkably effective. Between 1978 and 1981, the team achieved extraordinary success, clinching four consecutive Grey Cup victories, a feat akin to winning the Super Bowl in the NFL. During these early years, Moon's role was initially shared, but his undeniable talent and prowess soon became apparent. By the midpoint of the 1980 season, Moon had solidified his position as the team's primary quarterback. 
His leadership and skill were instrumental in guiding the Eskimos to their third straight Grey Cup. Moon's performance reached its zenith in the championship game, where he was rightfully honored with the Grey Cup MVP award for his outstanding play. The dominance of the Edmonton Eskimos during this era, with Moon at the helm, drew parallels to what would later be seen in the NFL's New England Patriots dynasty. However, the Eskimos' success story had its unique flair, reminiscent of a dynasty unhindered by counterparts like Eli Manning in the NFL. A significant credit for the Eskimos' reign at the top of Canadian football undoubtedly goes to Warren Moon. His exceptional ability to execute throws in seemingly impossible situations set him apart as a quarterback of extraordinary caliber. Moon's tenure with the Eskimos not only etched his name in the annals of CFL history, but also laid the groundwork for his future successes in the NFL. During the 1982 season, he broke yet another incredible professional football record, becoming the first quarterback to pass for 5,000 yards in a single season. This season had initially gotten off to a rough start, with the Eskimos dropping to a 3-5 record. Warren Moon managed to turn on the clutch setting and close out the year with eight straight wins. Heading into the playoffs off the wins of a four-peat, many people thought it would be impossible for them to win again. Moon had other plans and managed to set the CFL playoffs fields on fire, blowing through the playoffs and ending up in a fifth straight Grey Cup. This game was a blowout for the Eskimos with a final score of 32-16. Even in the literal freezing rain that downpoured throughout the entire game, Moon was able to complete 21 of 33 passes for 319 yards and secured another MVP award. This made five straight championships for the Edmonton squad and the United States. The NFL was forced to take note of this quarterback, absolutely dominating the CFL with ease. Moon would return to the CFL for one more season in the year of 1983 and proceed to break all of the records he had set one year prior. He passed for 5,648 yards and won a league MVP award. The rest of the team's performance wasn't able to keep up with his output, and the team fell to an OK 8-8 record. This would mark the end of Warren Moon's CFL career. In just six years, he managed over 21,000 yards passing with 144 touchdowns. That, in conjunction with his five straight championships, makes him one of, if not the best CFL quarterback of all time. He was ranked fifth on a list of the 50 greatest CFL players of all time in 2006 and was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2001. Initially avoided by the NFL, when Warren decided to return to the States, there was an absolute frenzy of teams competing for his attention. While many teams offered him large contracts and starting jobs, he decided to sign with the Houston Oilers. This decision did come with a large contract and a starting role, but it also was alongside the same head coach he had previously won five championships with in the CFL. Unfortunately for the duo, the NFL was just an entirely different beast, and the same strategies that had worked in the CFL had middling success in the States. His first year, Moon was effective, throwing for 3,338 yards, which was a franchise record at the time. After a head coaching change in 1985 and another average season performance-wise, things really began to click for Moon in the 1986 season. That was the year head coach Jerry Glanville was brought into Houston, and he decided to actually use Moon's rocket of an arm the way it could be. The 1987 season was cut short due to strikes, but the team did manage to make their first playoff appearance of the decade. Warren did perform well on the playoff stage, throwing for 237 yards and a touchdown to win a wildcard game before being knocked out in the divisional round. 1988 was another okay season for Moon, but the offseason came with a major payday. In the modern era, we're used to seeing quarterbacks sign $200 million deals all day, but in the 80s, things were different. Regardless, prior to the 1989 season, Warren became the highest paid player in the NFL, with a five-year, $10 million contract. That's an insane amount of money, especially in 1989 dollars. The next three-year stretch would be some of the best football Warren Moon has ever played. The 1990 season saw him passing for 4,689 yards and 33 touchdowns. He had a game against Kansas City where he threw for 527 yards, which is still the second most all-time. The very next year, in 1991, he had another absolutely incredible season, passing for 4,690 yards and 23 touchdowns. At the time, there were only three quarterbacks who had ever had back-to-back 4,000-yard -back passing seasons. Warren Moon 
Dan Fouts, and Dan Marino. This season saw him also add another playoff win to his postseason record. In 1992, unfortunately, Moon's season was cut short by injury. He played in just 11 games, but Houston managed to make the playoffs. That playoff game still goes down as one of the largest comebacks in NFL playoff history, just not in a way that benefited Warren Moon. Going into halftime against the Buffalo Bills, the Houston Oilers held a 28-3 lead. Warren Moon had 222 yards passing and four touchdowns before the end of the half, and it was thought that there was no way the Bills could come back. The Bills managed to score five unanswered touchdowns in the second half, but as time was expiring, Warren Moon managed to lead a game-tying drive that forced overtime. The Oilers' defense just couldn't stop the Bills' offense, and unfortunately, the Bills won an overtime field goal. The game, now known simply as the comeback, was one of Moon's best personal playoff performances, but it just wasn't enough for the Oilers to win. The 1993 season was the best season the Oilers had under Moon. They managed a 12-4 record but fell short in the divisional playoff round to Joe Montana and the Kansas City Chiefs. After the 1993 season, the Oilers decided it was time to part ways with Moon and traded him to the Minnesota Vikings. Some fans thought that Moon had become washed up and incapable of performing, but he still had several elite seasons left in the tank. He held the Oilers' franchise record for wins until it was broke by Steve McNair in 2004. By that time, the Oilers had changed their name to the Titans and moved to a different state. While in Houston, his overall stats were an impressive 33,685 yards and 196 touchdowns. He took the Oilers to the playoffs seven times, but unfortunately has a 3-6 record in the postseason overall. To this day, he still holds the Titans franchise record for completions, completions in a single season, most passing yards, most passing yards in a season, most touchdowns, and playoff passing yards. He was consistently in the Pro Bowl throughout his tenure as well, but brighter and better awaited in Minnesota. His first season in Minnesota was fueled by wanting to prove his doubters wrong, and he definitely put any rumors he was past his prime to bed. His first year for the Vikings saw him racking up 4,264 yards through the air with 18 touchdowns. It was enough to clinch a playoff berth that they lost, and putting up another 4,000-yard season was enough to quiet the doubters. It helped that the following year in 1995, he had another lights-out season throwing for 4,228 yards and 33 touchdowns. Somehow, the rest of the team wasn't able to hold it together and they missed the playoffs. The Vikings fan base was elated. They seemed to have their future franchise quarterback who was coming off two incredible seasons. The 1996 season would throw Moon another curveball, but his ability to adapt and overcome made it manageable. Halfway through the 96 season, he suffered a season-ending injury, and his backup at the time, Brad Johnson, proceeded to step in and play incredibly well. This made the Vikings decide to move on from Moon, which some still say was one of their dumbest front office moves of the 90s. They ended up releasing Warren Moon after he refused to take a $3.8 million pay cut and moved to a backup quarterback role. Finding himself once more without a football team, Warren Moon faced a critical juncture in his illustrious career. Despite advancing in age, he was confident in his continued ability to perform at an elite level in the league. Several teams showed interest, presenting Moon with a range of possibilities. After careful consideration, he chose to return to his collegiate roots in Washington, accepting the role of starting quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. This decision was not just a professional move, it was a sentimental homecoming that rekindled his passion for the game. The 1997 season with the Seahawks saw Moon in remarkable form. Demonstrating his enduring talent, he threw over 3,600 yards and 25 touchdowns, a testament to his skill and experience. His exceptional performance that season didn't just contribute significantly to the team's offense. It also earned him another Pro Bowl selection. In this all-star game, Moon's prowess was on full display, culminating in him being honored as the Pro Bowl MVP a recognition of his outstanding contribution on the field. However, Moon's first season's success was shadowed by the recurring issue of injuries that had intermittently plagued his career. The 1998 season was particularly challenging, as these injuries sidelined him, cutting short what had been shaping up as another stellar year comparable to 1997. This turn of events led to a dwindling of opportunities for starting roles with other teams. At this stage in his career, Moon's susceptibility to injuries became a significant concern for teams considering building their roster around him. 
it's essential to acknowledge the extraordinary longevity of Moon's career. By this point, he had been playing professional football for over two decades, an achievement few players ever reach. The physical demands of such a lengthy career invariably increase the likelihood of becoming prone to injuries. Moon's journey is a remarkable example of resilience and skill in professional sports, demonstrating that even in the face of challenges, greatness can endure and leave a lasting impact on the game. Even though he knew he would never be a starter in the league again, he had a passion for football and decided to sign with the Chiefs to serve as a backup for the 1999 and 2000 seasons. He threw his final touchdown in a Chiefs uniform on October 22, 2000 against the Rams. In January of 2001, he announced his retirement. He was 44 years old and had played 23 years of pro football. His final NFL stats were 49,235 yards, 291 touchdowns, 233 interceptions, 1,736 yards rushing, and another 22 touchdowns on the ground. That ranks him 13th of all time in the NFL in regards to passing yards and 16th all-time in passing touchdowns. That would already make him an all-time great, but let's not forget that he spent his first six years in a completely different league. The things that derailed his NFL career the most were his consistent injuries, but if he had another six years of peak production, who knows where he'd rank all-time. If you combine his CFL and NFL stats, he passed for 70,553 yards, 435 touchdowns, and 5,307 completions. If Moon had been given the chance and support that the NFL could have provided, there's a legitimate chance that he could have been the all-time passing record holder. The fact that he ranks in the top 15 all-time in both major professional American leagues is a testament to his ability. After retiring, he was introduced into the NFL Hall of Fame in 2006. At the time of his retirement, he was in the top five all-time for passing yards, touchdowns, and completions. His number was retired by the Tennessee Titans, and he eventually was able to secure a Super Bowl ring as a broadcaster for the 2014 Seattle Seahawks. Since his retirement, Warren Moon has dedicated his time to his family and to making significant contributions to the communities he's a part of. Embracing a life centered around his wife and children, Moon's also extended his influence beyond his immediate family circle channeling his experiences and wisdom into mentorship roles. Notably, he was a key mentor to Cam Newton, the first overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, offering guidance and support to the budding quarterback. Moon's commitment to mentorship reflects his understanding of the challenges faced by young athletes and his desire to give back to the sport that shaped his life. Away from the football field and family obligations, Moon's deeply involved in his charitable work, particularly through the Crescent Moon Foundation. This foundation, named in his honor is a testament to his dedication to empowering future generations. It focuses on providing college scholarships to economically disadvantaged students, aiming to bridge the gap between talent and opportunity. Moon's commitment to the foundation is rooted in his belief in the transformative power of education and his desire to create avenues for success for those who face financial barriers. Through this foundation, Moon continues to impact lives, echoing the perseverance and determination that marked his own journey from an undrafted player to a football legend. In reflecting upon the illustrious career of Warren Moon, it becomes evident that his journey transcends the boundaries of mere athletic achievement. Moon's path from an undrafted player to a pro football hall of famer is a narrative rich with perseverance, resilience, and groundbreaking accomplishment. His career serves as a testament to the indomitable spirit of an athlete who, against the odds, carved out a legacy that challenged and redefined the perceptions of quarterbacking and professional football. Moon's story is not just about the personal records and accolades he amassed, impressive as they are. It's about the barriers he broke down in a sport that was, at the time, unprepared to embrace an African-American quarterback. His success laid a foundation for future generations, paving the way for other talented athletes who might have otherwise been overlooked due to racial biases. Through his sheer talent, determination, and leadership, Moon altered the landscape of the NFL, transforming what was once an arena of limited opportunity into a platform where talent, regardless of race, could shine. If you enjoyed this documentary, please be sure to press the like button and leave a comment down below. Here at Football Lore, we're trying to build a community of people who are passionate about the game of football and its history. If you enjoy documentaries like this, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss another video.